Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna give you an introduction to integers. Introduction to integers. Integers are all counting numbers, the number zero and all counting numbers as their negative opposite. Counting numbers are literally the numbers that you learn to count with. So when you're a little kid, like maybe a baby, and your mom or somebody is teaching you how to count, and you go one, two, three, four, those are the counting numbers. The number zero is not typically a counting number. People aren't taught to count with zero. People aren't taught zero, one, two, three. So integers are counting numbers, the number zero, and then all those counting numbers, but with a negative in front of it, which is that number's opposite. So I'm calling it the negative opposite here. So counting numbers on my number line that I have here are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then remember also integers are zero. And then all of those numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in their negative form are also integers. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. When you're looking at a number line, you need to remember that no matter how the numbers look, all the numbers to the right of the number line are gradually getting larger and larger and larger. The numbers to the left of the number line are gradually getting smaller and smaller. So just like 6 is less than 7, 5 is also less than 7, 4 is also less than 7, and negative 2 down here is also less than 7, negative 3 is less than 7, negative 4 is less than 7. So that also means that negative 4 is also less than negative 3 because it's on the left side of the number line. Like I said, all the numbers on the left are lower than any number to the right of it. So this negative 6 is less than this negative 5, even though that seems reversed than what you're used to thinking. 5 would be less than 6, but in this case, because the number is negative, the numbers work uh you know in reverse you can think of it as this is really like saying you have less than zero it's like um this is like owing money to a friend so um if i have zero dollars i would be at zero if i owed a friend one dollar i would be negative a dollar that means if i went to work and i earned a dollar when I first get that dollar, I need to pay my friend back. So it's like I have less money than zero dollars because I borrowed money from somebody. So the further in this direction, the further left you go, is the more you have that is less than zero. Okay? Let me move into some examples so we can make sure we understand which numbers are larger and which numbers are smaller than each other when we're dealing with integers. For the first type of example, we're going to circle the integer with the largest value. So, for example number one, we have 56 and 59. These are pretty easy. They're still integers because remember we learned that integers are the counting numbers. So, this one's easier because we don't have any negative numbers to deal with. So, if I'm going to circle the larger number, the number with the largest value, that'd be 59. So, that's pretty simple. But, what about this one? We have a negative number. We have 8 and we have negative 8. If you remember, just like I explained in the last slide, negative numbers are less than 0. So although they have the same appearance generally, except for the negative sign, the positive 8 is definitely more than the negative 8. The positive 8 is like saying you have $8. The negative 8 is like saying you owe your friend eight dollars that's less than eight dollars the last example is negative twelve and zero this might seem a little tricky because you may think oh twelve that's an actual number zero means nothing so twelve would be larger no that's actually wrong zero is larger than negative twelve because zero means you have nothing Negative 12 means you are in the hole. You actually owe somebody. So as soon as you do get some money, it's going to go away from you and go to somebody else because you have to pay somebody else back. Let's move into a different type of example to make sure we understand integers. Example number two says, order these integers from least to greatest. Okay, in order to do that, 
I'm going to think about a number line, just like I showed on the last slide. If I think about that number line, I'll remember that all of the numbers um, in relationship to my zero that were positive or did not have a negative sign were on the right side. So I'm going to start with zero um, and write it down. So let's see, I'm going to put my zero right here and a comma. Now I'm not going to deal with the negative two right now. I'm going to hold off on that um, and just deal with all my other numbers that I have. I've already used the zero, so I'm going to cross it off. So right now I'm only dealing with a 1, a 5, and a 2. I can order those from least to greatest pretty easily. I know that 1 comes first, then 2, then 5. So I'm going to write that part in, and I know that it goes to the right of the 0, because remember that number line that I showed you on the first slide showed all of the positive numbers or the regular counting numbers that you're used to dealing with um, You know, ever since you are a baby were on the right side. So here's my 1, a comma my 2, a comma, and my 5. I'm going to cross out all of these because I've already used them. And now I just have my negative 2. And remember, all of our negative numbers are on the left side. So I'm going to just add my negative 2 and put a comma. So if I'm going to order these numbers, the integers from least to greatest, it would be negative 2, then 0, then 1, then 2, then 5. Here's another example. I have 15, 20, negative 15, 0, and negative 17. I'm going to start with 0 again because it's kind of a nice place to start. Um, I have my 0 and I'm going to deal with all my positive numbers first. It just kind of simplifies it for me because I'm pretty good with positive numbers. I know which numbers are larger and smaller when I'm dealing with positive numbers. So I have 15 and I have 20 and I know 15 is less than 20 so if I'm going to order from least to greatest I know 15 is going to be next then I know 20 would be after. So now I'm going to cross these out. So really by going, you know, just doing my zero first, then my positive numbers, I really help myself out because now I only have a couple of negative numbers left and that's not that bad. So I just need to remember though, which comes first, the negative 15 or the negative 17. If you remember, on the left side of the number line, the numbers closest to zero um, mimic the numbers that are on the right side immediately. So on the uh, directly on the left of the zero is a negative one. So that's um, a number with a smaller absolute value, um, which I'll get into in just a couple more slides what absolute value means. Um, so basically my point is the number that appears smaller, not considering the negative sign, is going to be closer to zero. So I'm going to put a comma here and my negative 15 is going to be next. Cross that one off. And then my negative 17. I'm going to do one more example like this. Example number three. I have negative 7, negative 4, negative 6, and negative 23. Ah, they're all negative this time, and I don't have a 0. Okay, that's okay. Remember, the negative runs in reverse um, in the order that you write them down when you consider the like look of the number, not counting the negative sign. Okay, so just like how on the right side of our 0, we would have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The numbers would go in what you would call in order from left to right. These are going to go in order, but from right to left. Okay, So the smallest one needs to be on the right side. The smallest one, not considering the negative signs, would be negative 4. So that means the number before that should be the negative 6. I'm going to cross these off as I go. And the number before that should be the negative 7. And before that would be negative 23. Okay, let's move on to opposite numbers. Okay, for this type of problem, we're going to graph the integer and its opposite on a number line. Okay, so an opposite is just like what I mentioned in the beginning, um, the number that mirrors the number across the zero. So the opposite of positive 1 would be negative 1. So the opposite of 3 would be negative 3. So we're going to graph both the 3 and the negative 3. I'm going to just put a comma negative 3 because that's going to be the opposite on a number line. So I'm going to draw a number line. 
and I'm gonna put arrows because remember numbers never end I'm gonna put my zero just to give us like a good base a good starting place um, and I'm gonna draw one notch two notch and three notches and that's for my three and I'm gonna draw three notches this way one two three negative three okay so if I'm going to graph I'll just put a dot in each position so I have graphed the number three and its opposite negative three on a number line example number two has a four so remember the opposite of the number negative four is going to be positive four I'm gonna draw another number line I'm gonna start with zero again my negative four is gonna be over on the left side one two three four I have a negative four here and my positive four is gonna be on the right side one two three four over here draw a dot at each point and I have graphed negative four and four last example is negative 21 no problem the opposite of that is going to be positive 21 um, I am not going to draw 21 notches going in both directions coming from my zero I will draw my zero and I'm gonna skip count by fives this time which is totally okay to do 5 10 15 20 I'm actually gonna write in 20 and I'm gonna put um, 5 here and I'm actually going to just put my dot on the 21 position but not actually write 21 that's okay to do sometimes sometimes if you're dealing with numbers that are really large like 500 and you have to graph that you're not gonna spend the time writing each notch out so sometimes you need to um, you know skip count and abbreviate those notches if I was gonna write something up to one to 500 like I mentioned I might do I might um, count by 100 so this might be 100 200 300 and I will clarify here 5 10 15 that way it's very clear to know okay this is one space after that's a 21 okay so this is negative 5 then this is negative 10 this is negative 15 and negative 20 put one more notch and put my dot here for a negative 21. Now let's move on to absolute value. Okay, so the first example says find the absolute value of the integer. And absolute value literally just means the distance away from zero. So if I were to think of a number line, I would know that my zero would be here and I would have a 15 down here somewhere and there would literally be 15 notches each notch counts as one and as long as you're talking about each notch is one uh, place in between one counting number space in between one integer in between um so the absolute value of 15 would be 15 because it's literally 15 spaces away Example number two is negative six. This is going to be the same, but in reverse. Okay, so if I have a zero here, I can go one, two, three, four, five, and six notches to the left, and that's going to tell me that I have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces in between negative six and zero, meaning the absolute value of negative six is six positive six um i do want to point out that an absolute value can never be negative it must always be positive and that's because the absolute value is a distance you can never measure a distance negatively a distance has to be positive to measure the distance from one space to another space must be a positive value it can't be negative the absolute value of negative 81 is going to be 81. I'm not going to draw a graph for this one because really we just know that that just means 81 spaces to the left of 0. And the absolute value is only asking me how far it is away from 0, not which side or anything like that.
I hope this video helped give you a good basic understanding of integers. That was my last example. Thanks for watching.